Hello, everyone, and welcome to our show. I am Jamie Geller. This is Feed Your Soul, brought to you by Aish. I am here in the heart of Jerusalem, across from the Western Wall, literally right behind me. And it's been a while since we've been together. Too long. A lot going on in the world. Some things challenging. Also a lot of great, amazing, special things. And our happy place is bringing you comfort during these times in the form of comfort food. And one of our most exciting things and fun things to do is to introduce new comfort foods to the menu. We've got an incredible guest this week who's going to, I think, share something that's uh, probably new to most of you. So before I get into it and introduce our incredible esteemed guest, I want to say you to say, hey, tell me where you're watching from. Tell me how you're feeling today. Tell me what feeds your soul. What are you doing to make sure that you are physically and emotionally and spiritually balanced these days? What are you cooking in the kitchen? All of it. I want to know it all. I'm going to officially ask the producer, Adam, to just put up all the comments so that I can see them. And as I see them, I'll comment. And if we're in the middle of speaking, I'll try to get back to them. But I love hearing from you. It's, um, <laughs> I'm so excited that you love the Jamie Gallery Spices. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, we're going to learn about a new spice today and a new dish, like I promised. Um, I'm going to introduce my guest to you as you all chime in. BJ Farhani is an entrepreneur and activist who was born in Ethiopia, raised in Israel, and currently resides in New York. She's the founder of Bina Cultural Foundation. It's a nonprofit dedicated to celebrating and advocating for Ethiopian Jews in North America. Today, she's the chef and owner of an eclectic Ethiopian restaurant, Sion Cafe, that incorporates cuisine from the many places that have been influential in her journeys. This is one of, I think, our most um, special guests, let's say. Uh, we were actually meant to get together last week. We had to delay to this week. BJ, thank you for being here and joining Feed Your Soul. Hello, everybody. Thank you for having me. I love it, BJ. So I am broadcasting from where you used to live. Uh, I actually made Aliyah from New York, so you're broadcasting from where I used to live. So we're swapping places. It's cold here in Jerusalem today. What's the weather like over there in Harlem? Uh, it's quiet. It's in the 40s. It's not as bad, but it's cold enough. Cold enough. How long did it take you to get used to those temperatures there in New York? I don't think I'm used to it. I will never be. <laughs> I'm just not built for it every winter. I suffer. I have to bundle up, put foot warmers, feet, hands warmers. No, I don't know. I mean, for the last 20 years, I kind of survived it, but I don't know how long more. <laughs> Well, we're always happy to have you back in Israel. That's all I'm saying, DJ. Just putting that out there. And it's funny. It's hard for you to get used to. But here, I've become Israeli very quick. So, you know, come 60 degrees, I'm freezing. I'm looking for the gloves. My nose is cold. So I've adapted quite quickly to the temperatures here. <laughs> all right. So, BJ, what are we making today? Okay. So today, we're going to make a traditional Ethiopian uh, red lentil stew, which is called Mr. What? We, uh, you probably have the ingredients, which is we have beautiful onions and ginger and garlic. What I did ahead of time. I love it. Uh, everything fresh. What I did ahead of time, I blended uh, everything together to make it very fine. And we basically mm. going to take all of that and put it in our pot as of now. So when you say blended, BJ, like you literally put it in a blender, the raw ingredients? That's right. Mm -hmm. you, of course, you okay. peel your garlic and ginger of course. and your onion, and you blend it fine, fine. Uh, the reason okay. I like to do it is you just integrate and melt into the uh, lentil or whatever stew you're making uh, uh, very easily. And you, for people who, doesn't, who do not like onions or all of that stuff, you will never really feel it. So this right. is what we're doing right now. First of all, BJ, I love all onions and garlic, but I love the idea of having it melt into my stew. That's easy, even more delicious. That's an excellent tip that we could apply across all of our cooking. And of course, uh, within Ethiopian cooking, uh, the three ingredients you will find always will be onion, ginger and garlic and of okay. course 
In this situation, we're going to add our Berbera, the Ethiopian spice blend, in a little bit. Mm. But right. if you're making an Ethiopian stew, you must have at least those three ingredients. So those are your holy trinity of ingredients. <laughs> yeah, holy trinity. You call it that way. <laughs> we have to laugh a little, DJ. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, so, so what comes next? Right now, my uh, what I want to do is the water, the liquid from the onions, I want it to dry out. Okay. It's, uh, you know, it's kind of the bitterness of the onion, all of that. I want it to dry for five okay. minutes, for five minutes or so. And after that, we're going to add our uh, uh, olive, our oil. So it's cooking nicely, as you see. We just want to get rid, evaporate the liquid. It makes a big difference in terms of flavor when you do not have the liquid of the onions. So you're saying the flavor will be more concentrated and less watered down? Uh, not necessarily, but it seems sometimes it believe that with, when you evaporate the different liquids within the onion, that sometimes might be not the best for you. It when you have it dry, the flavors are more uh, intense and it enhances uh. the dish. Okay. Okay. Beautiful. BJ, when does Messer Watt typically eat? Is this like a weekday meal? Is this a comfort food for the winter? Is this a holiday dish? Uh, okay, so what's an Ethiopian tradition? Uh, Messer, usually uh, back home, it would be eaten in the weekdays. Uh, it's very nutritious. Uh, it's an ancient dish. You know, if you see a Esav and Yaakov, they brought yeah. Nazit Adashim. So it's very ancient yeah. and nutritious. So it's part of the Ethiopian culinary experience. So people will eat that throughout the week. And for Shabbat, usually we'll make the doro what? The chicken stew, the beef, wow. the fish, and so forth. Uh, within Ethiopian culture, eating vegan uh, dishes, stews is very uh, common. Uh, it's not just wow. a trend. It's within the tradition. Uh, so lentil, I would say, uh, Mr. What is a uh, one of the beloved comfort uh, dish that you can eat it either with rice, you can eat it with injera, which was I'm going to show you is the traditional uh, Ethiopian, Ethiopian bread. bread. Yeah, so exciting. So, as you see, Jamie, our water is evaporating. Uh, yeah, it's drying nicely in the pot. What I'm going to do right now, I'm going to add my oil. Uh, usually. I like to use canola, uh, okay. it's up to your liking. If you like olive oil, that's fine too, or avocado is fine as well. So basically when you're cooking, you're gonna smell very fragrant, delicious. The combinations of onion, garlic, and ginger, it's just incredible. And we saute it nicely. In a, minute, in a few minutes, we're going to add our Berbera spice. Uh, just to give you an idea, what is the Berbera? The Berbera is uh, a chili powder, which is, you know, with, uh, that, com uh, that contains about 17 spices. The base will be chili powder, paprika, cardamom, coriander, dry ginger, uh, red onion, you name it, cumin. And it beautiful and delicious flavor that it has such a unique aroma to the Ethiopian cooking. Is it? Is this one of the, is this like the basic spice that you would have in your house if you're, you know, you know, making Ethiopian food or is it specific to Mr. Wat? Uh, that is the base for majority of the Ethiopian <laughs> cooking. Uh, you okay. know, of course, anything to do with the red stew just yeah. have to be in it. But of course, there are other dishes like a split pea, which is yellow split pea. If you do collard mm. green, you not necessarily have to do put barbara, but you can add it. So, but okay. in order to have the unique Ethiopian flavor, you must have this unique uh, uh, blend. Beautiful. Now, BJ, what I'm interested to know is if this dish is specifically Jewish Ethiopian, because you mentioned Yaakov and Isa. 
Jacob and Esau of the biblical story, or is this like a sort of a global, like a universal Ethiopian dish? I would say, you know, it's universal Ethiopian. Uh, what it, the beauty of food in general, Jamie, is that it, Jews throughout the diaspora, we've been adapting and borrowing dishes from our neighbors. So yeah. we cannot per se say Jewish food alone because it came yeah. from somewhere. We are coming <laughs> and borrowing and learning from, you know, the communities that we've been involved. So the yeah. Ethiopian in general don't have this or what. But, in, you know, I would say the difference between the Ethiopian Jewish and the non will be in case of mixing meat and uh, milk or Beautiful. not cooking the meat with butter or, you know, those uh -huh. would be all the process of slaughtering the cow or the goat or any of that nature. Yeah. Yeah. So what is it, how has Harlem um, embraced the Ethiopian cuisine in Sion Cafe? What do they think? Well, I think it's been a, a, a blessing for us to be part of this community, uh, yeah. to have the honor to introduce the rich cuisine of Ethiopia and, of course, celebrating my uh, heritage, my being Ethiopian, Israeli, Jewish, all of that, bring it to Harlem, to the Mecca of Black culture, uh, was very, um, I would say they were, it was very welcoming. People embrace us easily. Uh, yeah. We're introducing something that is unique and healthy. Basically something yes. that nourishes your body and soul. We're all about enhancing, uh, you know, life quality, good food and all of that stuff. Yeah. I, I love that, BJ. That's what we're all about here on Feed Your Soul. And I love that you're bringing that to the heart of Harlem and historic Harlem and in New York and just putting Ethiopian cuisine and Ethiopian Jewish cuisine and Israeli cuisine, all of it on the map. I mean, you're really, really trailblazing and doing amazing. I thank you for doing this on behalf of all of us. It's incredible. Thank you, dear. I mean, uh, food is the, the easiest gateway to introduce people's culture and heritage. Yes. And when people yes. open and sit around a table and celebrate the richness of whatever ethnic group it is, I think that's a great way to start a dialogue and understanding and respect. So much so, I completely agree. I think I even saw something like shakshuka. I don't know if it's officially on your menu, but I know I saw it on the Today Show that you were doing that. And it's like, I love shakshuka in the heart of Harlem. I, I think it's just like a beautiful display of, like you said, cross-cultural peace, unity, discussion, um, dialogue and, and understanding. I think it's, it's stunning. It is, you know, of course, Jamie, I have to give it my own twist on any dish. Shakshuka, yes, yeah, <laughs> is North, North African and all of that, Algerian, Moroccan. But of yeah. course, to make it mine, I would put a little bit of Barbera or, uh, you know, uh, Farnagit seed just to claim yeah. it as my own. That's the beauty yeah. of cooking. We embrace and twist and adjust flavors according to our liking and so forth. Yes, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so what's next, BJ? So what next? We, our onions and uh, garlic with the oil is looking beautifully, as you see, right now. What are we, what are we looking for? Are you looking just to soften them or any browning, caramelization? What's the, what's the visual indicator here? The visual indicator here, you want it softened and smelling ready. You can smell that is, yeah. It, 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 I can smell it. it. <laughs> That's right. You got it. Right now, I'm going to add my tomato paste, right? Okay. That's a little bit. That's like my favorite. BJ, tomato paste is one of my favorite ingredients. It's like out of a can, but total umami. I love it with like vegetarian dishes, vegan dishes, soups, stews, meats. I love everything about it. It's convenient. It's very yeah. fun to work with, you know? Yeah. As you see, Jamie, I haven't added any water to my cooking. Yeah. It's very dry, so I'm just letting it emerge to one another in terms of flavor. But right okay. now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a little bit of hot water just so it mix better. Okay. You don't have to add all the water that you have, just a little bit, at least half a cup, to have it nice and liquidy now. 
because okay. we added that tomato paste. It's got a real thickness to it that you're building up there as the base. That's right. It's getting thick and the onion, all of that together, they're making a nice stew. Right. And right now, I'm going to add my Barbara and let it sit there and cook for a bit. What I would recommend in terms of the Barbara is really according to your liking. If you okay. like it a bit spicy, of course, you add a little bit more. If not, just do it less. So at least you have the flavors in there. Right. So because so you, you mentioned it's like 16 spices and you started with the chili pepper. Um, would you describe it as a hot spice mild delicate is like what's the fourth part if you had to describe you know what people are going to get from this are they going to get a heat from it yes you're going to get a heat from it but it depends on the blend uh some particular if you you can make it even at all you can use okay. with uh paprika if you don't want it too right. spicy. if you want okay. it spicy you can do cayenne so it really depends uh -huh. to your liking and your tolerance of spiciness right chloe's just tuning in right now and some people get to tune in they don't start with us at the beginning but they see us live can you just go through the basic spices that are in the berberry please of the berberry or the holy process the, the berberry the berberry okay uh for the berberry is i would say you can have base as a, a paprika or chili powder if you don't want it too spicy and you can add uh, a little bit of uh, grounded ginger garlic coriander, uh, even cinnamon, clove, all of that to make it very unique flavor. It's very aromatic and unique as it is. Beautiful. I love and, those combinations and it's not something I would typically put together. So I love that unique, like you said, that unique flavor profile. You know, and the other thing is within the Ethiopian community, if you go, every household or housewife <laughs> will have her own unique touch you know, whatever you like. So you know that yes. is your signature uh, Barbara dish. So, you know, oh, okay. so, so she like more coriander. She like more yeah. uh, kororima or all of that stuff. So each individual have unique touch to them or more garlic, whatever. So that is I as love long it. as you have the base to it, you're good to go. You can adjust and make it your own. Fabulous. Fabulous. Okay, so what's next here with our Messer Wad? Everyone is tuning in now. We're making an Ethiopian red lentil stew with BJ Barhani. She has Siam Cafe in the heart of historic Harlem. She's from Israel, living in New York. I made Aliyah from New York, living in Israel, and we're coming together around this delicious comfort food in this amazing dish. I saw we had a little bit more berber in there. I like it. I want it to be super flavorful. I'm, I can't wait yeah. to virtually taste it. <laughs> yes, I like mine a bit on the spicy side. Uh, uh -huh. But, you know, we all can adjust according to your like, uh, liking. As you see, it's, it's kind of coming together. It's very nice yes. red uh, color. I'm going to add a little bit of water to it. And then let Great. it simmer for a bit. Nice. BJ, is it ever? I'm, I'm guessing it's not classic or traditional, but like if you had vegetable broth or something, would you do that instead of the water? Or would that mix too much with the flavors that you're trying to build with the Burberry? Uh, if you want to do vegetable broth, you can, but I wouldn't put too much to it. If you okay. want the Ethiopian flavors in it, yeah, you definitely go ahead and do so. Okay, okay, amazing. Yeah. So this is going to take a little bit. We want it to really cook. We don't want raw onions because it's mm -hmm. going to be bitter. Uh, so right. The secret behind Ethiopian cooking is you have to take your time and cook it slow. Slow cook. You want to. Low cook. and slow. Yes. And you want the flavors to merge to one another. And this way you create a delicious, flavorful uh, uh, dish. You know, here we're making this particular Mr. Wat, which is one of my favorite. Uh, we, you actually can use it uh, with sal even on a salad, just to give it some oh. flavor. You can toss some greens, uh, add it as a sauce, and will give you a mm -hmm. nice texture with injera cortons, if you dry the injera. So it's very versatile. I utilize it sometimes mm -hmm. as a dip. Which I love that. 
or you can use it with pita bread. So it's up to you. I was going to say pita, challah, I love it. Yes, yes, definitely. So you're merging the challah with the Ethiopian flavor. That's what we are. <laughs> BJ, are you, you said you have to have patience. You're going to cook it low and slow. Are you a patient person? I, I would say so. It depends <laughs> on what situation and what the case. Because <laughs> um, I'm not. And I'm always like tasting and taking off the flyer early. Like, you know, it's hard. It's hard when my mouth is watering to wait and let that magic happen. So, <laughs> so you know, I haven't added much salt as of yet. I'm going yeah. to add salt and pepper to my liking. We're going to go and do that. And if you were cooking with me, you probably would taste now and smell it. It looks wonderful. I hope Amazing. you can see it. I can. It's gorgeous. It looks so beautiful. You don't, yeah, don't, no need to pick it up. I can see it. Amazing. And I can see it starting to really, yeah, um, like start to color and get thicker, richer, darker. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Is is awesome. It's delicious. Okay. Yeah. Uh, when do we add our lentils? I'm so excited for that part. <laughs> yeah. We're going to let it cook some more because I tasted the onions. It's not okay. fully cooked. You want it okay. basically to melt. You don't want to feel nothing. So that's okay. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So we're talking about um, the Ethiopian bread as well. Yes. In jail, so, like we've seen before. Uh, here, I brought, this is a traditional Ethiopian basket. And I brought you the Ethiopian bread right here, the injera. Uh, I love this it. This is uh, gluten-free, made out of uh, teff, uh, a grain native to Ethiopia called teff, naturally gluten-free, full of nutrient, if it's iron and vitamins and so forth. This is the national bread where it's basically utilized to scoop uh, the dishes from. You, you know, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the stews on the injera and you're eventually gonna rip off and pick up your stew and eat it. Uh, as you see, Jamie, this is gluten-free. Ethiopia as an Asian country been on the trend for thousands of years before it become trendy. <laughs> I was going to say, the vegan food and the gluten-free bread, done and done. I can't even, totally, before it, was, before it was cool. Before it was trendy. Yes, we got that yes. on a daily life. Right. Do you think, actually, um, in general, would you describe um, a healthier eating, like an inherently healthier lifestyle, like to the food and to the culture? Uh, yes. Ethiopian food is very much healthy, lean and uh, plant-based. As you see, right. majority of the time, eating meat on a weekdays is not part of the tradition. It's not acceptable as much. People right. will, you know, wait for Shabbat or Friday night to come so they can eat the chicken, the meat, and the fish, all of that stuff. There was a whole anticipation for it, and there is more appreciation. Nowadays, you know, people eat meat on a daily basis, and we're losing that kind of enthusiasm. Yeah. Anticipation for Shabbat and the special food and all of that. But still within Ethiopian culture, not necessarily only Jewish, they have yeah. a lot of fasting days where you stay away from meat and dairy and meat, all of that stuff, and you eat only vegan food, which is healthy wow. for your uh, system, yeah. yourself, your mind, your soul, all of that. So beautiful. I mean, I, I want to talk, BJ, a little bit about Bina, Beta Israel of North America. Tell me a little bit about that. What it is? What is it that you do? Obviously, not just an entrepreneur, not just a chef, not just a restaurateur, but an activist. Tell me about that organization. So, uh, about 2003, uh, I I formed Bina Cultural Foundation, uh, Beta Israel of North America Cultural Foundation, basically to showcase and celebrate the rich culture of Ethiopian Jewry. And that by doing a film screening or a, a, you know, art exhibition and discussion and all of that stuff mm -hmm. in order to enrich it and, and bring a better integration to Ethiopian uh, uh, Jewry. Because mm -hmm. 
here in the U.S., people know of uh, Ethiopian Jews, but never really met or interacted. And right. every time I would go to a synagogue or a place, oh, are you a Jew? So how are you a Jew? All of that stuff. <laughs> uh, you know, and we wanted really to showcase that Judaism is more diverse and, uh, and more inclusive than what people anticipate. And Correct. so by showcasing art, uh, food, uh, we, I would say we broaden the understanding of people of the Jewish diversity within the U.S. and is going and speaking in colleges, universities about inclusion and diversity. I would say within the last 10, 15 years, it's different what it used to be in comparison to the early to, uh, 2000. Um, mm -hmm. They are more embracing, open, and I think we need to be in that state of mind that Jews are from all over. We have Jews from Ethiopia, from uh, Uganda, South Africa, Poland, Russia, Algeria. We should focus on celebrating the uniqueness of Jewish diaspora or diversity rather than focusing and emphasizing, are you Jewish enough? Or are you, mm -hmm. are you, how are you Jewish? You know, all right. that is unnecessary. It creates friction and division. After all, it's not that many of us. We should be embracing Correct. one another and celebrating everybody. Amen, amen. BJ, you said it perfect. I'm, uh, I was thinking I have so much to add and actually nothing. You said it just perfectly. And I guess the, only, the first introduction is food. Let's be open and embracing and welcome people to our table. Yes. Uh, yes. If you're doing a Passover or whatever holiday, adapt a new dish to your table from other Jews of the diaspora. So this way we are inclined to be more respected, you know, respectful and understanding of our yeah. uniqueness and diversity. That's what Yeah, I it's beautiful. I, I preach it and I love it and I'm eating it up. And tell me what's next here now, my mess or what? It's the, your mess or what is about ready. It's getting Woo! very thick. <laughs> As you see, I'm adding a little bit of water just to give it more because it's very, very thick. You see the, the onions are integrated and becoming nice and unified with the bird better. Right now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my red lentil. Where are my red lentil? There you go, red lentil. We're gonna rinse them, uh, wash it nicely. It depends. Sometimes you might get lentil that is not cracked, and that might take uh -huh. longer to cook. In okay. this case, mine is cracked, so it will be a lot faster cooking it. I, I like to wash my. Uh, lentil or any anything that I cook with cold water. Yeah. Great. It does do feel it does feel very biblical, BJ, the red lentil stew. Um, and right now it's a it's a cold day here in Jerusalem. For anyone who's tuning in now, I'm here with BJ Barhani, entrepreneur, activist, restaurateur, owner of the chef and owner of Sion Cafe in the middle of historic Harlem. She's from Ethiopia, raised in Israel, living in New York for 20 years. And we are making Messerwat, a red lentil Ethiopian stew, comfort food typically enjoyed during the week, vegan. And we're eating that with injera, which is gluten-free bread. So That's right. we're hitting, so all, the, we're hitting all the high notes. <laughs> we rinse our lentil, we're gonna dump it in. You see, right. just because of the red lentil is so biblical and ancient and unique, Yes. Imagine that Esav let go of his being the first birthright. Born. Correct for that. for that. I mean, I'm willing to sell my soul for a bite here, BJ. So I totally get that. You know. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Do you make it back? I obviously not now, given the situation um, that we have. But do you make it back to Israel much? Like, do you often come back? Do you have any family here? Where did you grow up here? I do. Actually, the plan is to come for the summer because the son, my son is 13, 13, turning 13 is about bar mitzvah. Oh. Uh, God willing, we don't know. Hopefully, we'll be able to travel. We're anticipating for that. So I Great. hope to see you then. We're most likely going to be by the hotel for sure. 
You're going to come here. You're going to come to the H World Center. I'm going to give you a gorgeous tour. We have a special bar mitzvah experience um, and a Western Wall experience to explain the meaning and uh, behind this incredible place here, the Western Wall and the Temple Mount. So you've got to come, and it would be awesome to meet you and to hug you in person. Where did you grow up here in Israel, BJ? Okay, so I'm a little bit from all over. Uh, my first couple of years after I immigrated, when I first immigrated to Israel, I uh, I grew up in an observation center in Pardes Hana in the north, yeah. uh, not far from Khadera. And from there, we moved to Ashkelon, uh, you know, Ashdod, all of that area. Yeah. After a while, I was, uh, I wanted to live in a kibbutz. And uh, I just basically said, I feel like I, I need to spend a couple of years in a kibbutz. I left my family. Uh, I found a family that adopted me in a kibbutz and stayed there for four years. I wanted to experience the cooperative, uh, sharing way of life. And, you know, uh, and that kind of very much uh, was something that I wanted to experience. So working in a kibbutz, uh, eating, working in a dining hall, in the refet. Uh, you know, on the field, pulling some carrots. That's wow. my experience uh, of being part of working the land of Israel. That's how I grew Beautiful. up. And after that, basically, as like a typical Israeli kid, you enlist in the army. And yeah. after that, I decided that I want to go explore the world. So I took a backpack, came to New York, and back in the 96, I believe, loved mm -hmm. New York. And I wanted to be part of it, but I had other plans. Went to Central America, South America, spent a whole year. Uh, it was magnificent, encountering with so many ethnic groups, tribes, uh, doing the Inca Trail, going to Machu Picchu. It was wow. a surreal experience. The jungles in the Amazons, all of that. But nonetheless, New York City always was back there in my mind. Calling you. Uh, <laughs> after that whole year journey, I went back to Israel, spent a couple of years. I'm like, you know what? I think I'm going back to New York. That's what happened. Wow. Yeah, and things, you know, evolve and forming a nonprofit and all of that. And yeah, and where we are right now. And here we be, as we say. Tell me, BJ, you, pre you prepared something also to drink because we're almost nearing the end of our show and I wanted to see the special drink or drinks that you prepared for us as well. Okay, so it's, I wouldn't, you know, it's nothing really that I would say I make, but uh, earlier I was sharing with you the nice organic Ethiopian coffee that I was drinking because I felt mm -hmm. like I need something strong. And just to <laughs> let you know, coffee uh, was born in Ethiopia. Ethiopia is the birthplace of coffee. There yes. was a story of it in the region of Kava. So I love my shot of espresso with Ethiopian organic beans every day. I cannot go without it. Well, but well. To, to top it with, I brought a unique uh, drink, Jamie. It's, I brought an Ethiopian honey wine. It's oh, a- Oh, BJ, it looks gorgeous. Oh, it's talk to ancient, me about this. One of the ancient drinks is called meat. This is where Queen of Sheba, according to the legend, brought to King Solomon, and he would never would let her go. Well, Lechaim. Lechaim. Well, BJ, I have water because I told you I got stuck in Jerusalem. I'm not in my kitchen. So I'm going to Lechaim to you, and I'm never going to let you go. We're going to be friends for life now, BJ, okay? As long as it's the water from the Kinara, it's the Pseven Gamur. <laughs> lechaim, Lechaim. So we're nearing the end of the program. Just show us, BJ, how do we plate this? How do we eat this? The okay. Mr. Watt. Our lentil is really almost there. It's looking beautiful, but we need to give it some time. But okay. in that case, I made you uh, one red A beauty, a beauty plate. Uh, Mr. Watt, as I said, you always can put it on the injera bread. Great. Let me scoop that. Just just speak, BJ, for one quick moment about the style of eating, eating with your hands. Okay, that's what we do. So traditionally, what I will do, look here, I'm going to take the red lentil, 
dump it in here, right? Okay. And traditionally, you're going to take a piece of bread like that. Okay. I'm going to grab, kind of hug it nicely, uh -huh. and I'm going to... Oh, one bite. Within our tradition, if you were here, Jamie, I wouldn't okay. feed you. It's called gursha. So I'll okay. take this to you. Let's have one. And you would feed me? And you would feed me? That's right. Wow. That's within our culture. It's called gursha. We feed you because you are our guest. It's an honor to have you. So to your health. I mean, to your health too. Thank you. You can have my bite just because we're far away. <laughs> That's beautiful. Oh, BJ, I love this so much. I love learning from you. I love learning about the culture and the story of Ethiopian Jewry. I love what you're doing in terms of spreading that and a message of love, tolerance, diversity, and understanding from the heart of historic Harlem. Um, it, it's really an honor to meet you. And BJ, I'm not, I'm holding you to it. If you make it in here this summer, you're going to come here. We're going to host you. I'm going to meet you. I'm going to hug you and wish you a mazel tov in person for your son's bar mitzvah. Sounds like a plan. I'm looking forward to it, dear. Thank you, BJ, so much. Shalom. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, BJ. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay, guys, how was that? I think that was like my most um, interesting, special, unique episode of Feed Your Soul. We here at Aish, we want to do the show more. We love that you love it. And we want to hear more from you. If like you love hearing from unique people, uh, learning about unique food. Like I said, comfort food, something we can all use now. It's cold. There's a lot going on in the world. We're coming to the end of another uh, calendar year, which was filled with a lot of unexpected twists and turns. So we hope that maybe you'll add mess or watch to your comfort food menu. Just another way to sort of feed that soul of yours and cozy up. Um, it's great for everyone who's watching. I love seeing you. I love hearing from you. Continue to tell me where you're watching from in Florida. Um, oh, I'm so glad that you and happy that we posted a new video and that we're here with another episode. Hey there, Jeff in Manchester. Great to see you. Oh, hello, the Chimmins. Shalom from Texas. What's cooking in Texas? Stockholm, Sweden, Anna. It's great to see you and to hear from you. Hey there, uh, in Miami, Florida. Wilda Suarez, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Paul Oliveris Gili, am I saying that right? In Barcelona. Hello, hola, como estas? Um, and hey there, Bailey, BW Bailey, making turkey sausage in Florida. Um, the lentils was really fun. I think it was really cool. I loved learning that before it was cool and before it was trending, um, ancient Ethiopian uh, cuisine is generally vegan during the week. The bread in Jera is gluten-free. That was really cool to learn that. Hey there, Eva in Maryland. Hi there, Eden in Ontario, Canada. It's great to hear from you. Hi there, Chloe in Minneapolis. Um, hi there, Taylor in Israel. I'm here in Jerusalem and just outside the Western Wall. I hear the Dan family, Ish World Center. Hi there in Pakistan, in Sunny. How are you doing? Downtown NYC, Ruth. What's cooking in the Big Apple these days? Um, do they do the ball drop anymore? Just wondering about that. And Ruth over there in Jerusalem too. We've got a second Ruth shouting out. Uh, Philly, Shana Goza, what's up? It's been so long, you look beautiful. Your picture looks so nice. It's great to hear from you. It's great to see you. Hi there, Shana Golda, sending you love. I'll send you love for my mom. I know she would send her love as well. I didn't see my mom on this broadcast. She's usually always here. So mommy, in case I missed you, I love you. Um, and I hope you got to see this or you're watching this on replay. This is Feed Your Soul. I'm Jamie Geller, brought to you by Aish. Check us out on Aish.com. Please follow us on social everywhere. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Pinterest, YouTube. We have incredible, incredible programming. If you like this, I love it. I loved her story today, DJ Barhani. Um, you're going to love all the other things uh, that we have to offer across all social and, of course, on Aish.com. Join our happy, amazing community. We always say Jewish ideas have changed the world. If you want to find out why, check us out. This is Feed Your Soul. I'm Jamie Gallery saying Shalom from Jerusalem.